Good morning, my gorgeous friends on the internet. It's actually almost evening, but I stopped caring. Why does time 2x every year? It feels like it speeds up so much. It's like, what's that thing called? Moore's Law? Yeah, we have that shit. So I wanted to make an episode on filtering using Next.js 14 to filter out all the negativity in our lives. You'd think we'd be the opposite. Next.js adds the negativity by digress. Um, so yeah. You know what like server components introduced and everything new. I know that there's a lot of people that still don't quite understand how would they approach filtering. So we'll build this out in like 10 minutes and I'll keep it really simple. I promise as long as you drop a subscribe because other YouTubers are catch it up. Okay, so let's pull up Next.js and have some fun. So we know that when we have a home component like this one, right? A page component. We can mark it with async, which is gonna make it a server component. And here we can just like fetch our data directly without using use effect and react query or any of that, right? So you could do something like const, um, I have variants here. Uh, these are product variants. I'll show you what they are in just a second. But I'll just fetch them quickly like that. Okay, so this is how you would do it. This is how you fetch data in a server component. Now let's check out this get variants quickly. So I'm using Drizzle here. It's a super simple, I'm basically getting all the products here. Uh, this is for the next GS14 course. Uh, the next video or two is probably gonna be about that. So just, uh, it's gonna be a big reveal. I'm super excited for that. Anyway, so it's just, Drizzle here, we are fetching a product uh, with the images and those images also have tags on them, okay? And basically, if we succeed, then we return an object here of type success. This is how I like to do it. And if not, then I return an object of type error, okay? So now here, when you get the variance, I can actually just deconstruct this and pull out the error and the success object. So if I go down here and say something like if success, then I can render out the markup down here. Okay, I can loop over this as well. Come on, GitHub Copilot, I trust you. Do it. Hey, yes, let's go. It's not perfect. It's close enough though. I don't know what you're trying to do here. Okay, there we go. It's, it's not getting the name here. Let's do variant dot. Um, we should just pull up the name. Just like that. I don't need a description. We'll just get the image and the source there. Okay, so there we go. Look at that. So this is all nice and dandy, but the problem is that we're getting this back from the database and we're just like rendering it out on the server and sending it back, right? So there's no like on clicks here or anything that we can add. So this is like hard static here. Hard and static. I should have just said static. So what you normally do here is if you still want to like maintain just like server side rendering everywhere, you could offload the like filtering to the database. So you'd have like a filter here in the like server action. And then here, you know, in Drizzle, you do some sort of like comparison. If greater than blah, 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 then just return me the subset of uh, variants. The problem with that is well, not problem. It's just like a different approach really. I'm not really a big fan of that because that means like if I click on a filter that would have to send another request to the database. And then if someone just goes on there, it just like clicks a hundred times. That's not too good, is it? So, but I, and I also don't like to do it. I really like to do client side stuff when I can. So that's why I'm opting for it. I don't know how other people do it. This is why I like it because it's super simple. Here we go to see how simple it is. Okay, cool. Okay, so I'm just fetching in there. So what you could do here, we're not gonna do this. I'm just giving you like a situation that we could get ourselves into. Uh, you'd move this into a client components. You'd cut this out. You'd maybe create like a products TSX here, right? Add use client to the top. So then you can add states and, you know, on clicks and whatnot. I need to create this. Come on, product, there we go. Return this sucker. Let's just add some fragments in there. Cool. Okay. So how can we pass that data down here? So here's the whole fugaz that you, the whole song and the dance you have to do. Okay. Ready? Well, you'd import the product. All right. Okay. So now this product needs, needs the success, right? It needs the data. So you'd go here products. That's a success. Cool. Okay. Now you go in here, you get your success. Well, we can call it products. There we go. And then we have products here of type what? 
Now this is the problem when it comes to props. I really don't like passing down to props because two things. One, I don't like components that are just dependent on one another. Like, I like to just be able to pop in product somewhere and it works, you know, like that's kind of the, the goal we're trying to reach. We cannot always do it, but like that's what we want to do. We'll try to just make components that you can just pop them in and they work, right? Uh, that's why I try to do at least. Um, okay, so now you pass this down. Now you need to get the type of this. We're in Drizzle world now. So it's going to be different from everyone. So everyone's going to have a different problem. But in case we have Drizzle here. Okay. So the products here is... So I know they're like variants. Okay, I, sh I should have named this variants just to keep it the same. Variants, let's do that now. Okay, so we'll name variants everywhere. Cool. Boo, boo, boo. Okay, so in my schema, if I try to like infer this model, let me show you. So here's my, let's find it, variant. Here we go, product variants, okay? So that's the type. However, product variants also has variant images and variant tags. Like I'm pulling that from my action here, see? I'm not just getting the product variants, I'm also adding it with the images and tags and whatnot. So my data actually has this, but also the images and also that. And there's, if we try to like infer the model like this, product variants, I'm only gonna get that, see? So here we go, this is a cool little trick, a uh, little type TypeScript trick that you can use to generate uh, with relations, your types. So here we go, I did it here. If you wanna check this code out quickly, there we go. And then here I can just infer the result type with the products or whatever I want, which is great. So if we do it with that, that, that would fix our problem. So we could just do that. And here we can also import just that type on its own. So I can do type of product variants and that's okay. Like you can do that. I want to thank today's sponsor, Brilliant. They offer thousands of lessons on computer science, math. They even got something on machine learning, which is fantastic because I'm just getting into that. So pretty much everything I love. Um, I'm, I'm like, I'm living such a busy lifestyle now and like work and family and everything's going on. So I like try to find ways to learn, but I'm not gonna watch a full 10 hour course on math, you know? So Brilliant offers these fun interactive lessons that you can just hop in, do a lesson at any level you want and any topic you want, you know? You can even do a test to kind of see where you are in your comfort level that you want to approach a subject and then you can go in from there. So check out the link in the description down below. You got a free month trial so you can just give it a go and it also comes with 20% off your annual subscription. So thank you so much for sponsoring this episode. Let's get back to it. Yes, we done. So that's great, right? So now from here, you can move around, you can do on clicks, whatnot, blah, blah, blah. What's the problem with this? Again, like passing props, blah, blah, takes time. And if I have another component here that I want to pass it further down, I have to do the whole song and the dance again. And I don't want to do that. So here's where you can opt for something like React Query to just offload that work uh, to React Query to manage your server state. So that's what we're going to do. So install React Query. Um, the command is here. That's the one. Cool. And now what you can do is create this. Uh, we're going to need to create a query client. And with this query client, you can invalidate queries, set queries, whatever. Okay. And here's like a super simple way you can do it. So import query client here. I've just made another file here called query in my lib folder. And I'm just creating a make query client function here and I'm just returning a new query client. Ugh, keep saying that. Okay, and then here, what we're doing is essentially we're not like recreating a query client every time. Um, so yeah, so we have that going out as well. Cool. And now you just wrap this in the provider. So you can make like a, another provider here. I'll create the query client once and then I pass it down here into children, okay? And then in your layout, you just wrap the thing, right? We've done this a couple of times before. Cool, really cool. So now rather than doing this, we can still fetch the data here server side. Uh, so we can do something like this. We can get that query client. Actually, we don't even need to do this. Oh, we do. Because we need to await query client and prefetch those variants, okay? Uh, didn't do it correctly here. We actually need to add an object here with a query key. There we go. That's an array like that. And then you add your function. Now this is not gonna work uh, if you add it like this. If you're working with server actions, this is actually not gonna work. Uh, and the reason is, is our server action, let me show you. 
returns it always resolves the promise always resolves uh, we return an object if it's success we also return an object if it's error so react query all react query cares about is if a promise resolved or not because when we try to pull out the error and the like data you're gonna see in just a second it's not gonna work so let me show you um so this is how you prefetch the data here okay i'll leave it like this for now what do you do with the products well let's get rid of this if success we don't need to pass down any props anymore any component that you want to hydrate and like because we're prefetching here and you want to send that to the client you need to wrap it with this hydration boundary now you can move this up a level if you want if you don't want it to be here i'm just showing it to you here because it's easier to see okay so anything you want to hydrate any client components we'll just pop it in there okay and then here this also takes a state argument and you just need to dehydrate the query client here query client there we go and that's that that's all you need to do and now everything here you can just go in here we'll remove the props remove that save let's just clear everything out there instead you can just go here and say const variance equals use query and our query key is going to be the variance and the query function is going to be the get variance and we'll make sure to import that as well there we go so this is cool because anywhere we want to use these variants i'm just passing use query and the use query function here with the key and that's it and again if you move the hydration boundary up you know to your like layout or in like the provider component then it's really cool and then you can just use it anywhere so again here we can pull out the data the error and the is loading right but again the problem is that the data here actually holds the success and the error as well so this error here is actually useless and it's not going to do anything for us so what we can do instead here, rather than just passing down a reference, we can expand this with async and using a function here. And rather than that, I'll just get the variance here. And I can check if the variants have a success, then I can return that success, okay? However, if there is an error, then I can throw a new error here like that. So there we go. Now our data is always just gonna hold our data and the error is gonna throw here. So it's always gonna be added to the error message here, okay? So let's try to grab the data here, pass it down and hit save and see if that works. And here we can also check, hey, if data is available, then we can render this out. And we can also check if there is an error on the client component, we can return the error message there if we want to. And this still doesn't work because we are not deconstructing the variance here for it to work with use query when we're prefetching the data. So let's just grab this and copy it over uh, to our home page as well. So here with the query function, just replace that with that. Okay, let's hit save and see if this works. And there we go. So now check this out. This is so quick and easy. We can just create a product tax here. I'll import it here. Now let me just show you what I did. Okay, what we can do is import use router here. This is going to be a client component and I'm creating the set filter function. And what I'm essentially doing is I'm passing down a string, right? And if the string exists, then I'm pushing that string in. So that tag, so in this case, blue or whatever, right? Uh, if there's no tag, then I'm just going to push back to slash, which means I want to show all the variants. Okay. Here I'm just rendering out some badges uh, from chat CN and that's it. I'm just setting the state here. Look, boop, boop. See how it changes green, yellow. And then when I click all, it just goes back to nothing. We can go back to our products here and we can use search params to check what's going on here in the URL. So let's import use search params like that. And now we can grab that tag from it. So we can use params.get to do that. And there we go. We have the tag available for us. And now what we're going to do is create that filter. And how that looks is we're essentially just creating a variable here and using use memo to cache that value. So it only changes when our data or the tag change. Okay. So basically when the URL changes, this filter memo is going to run. And rather than placing the data, this is our original one that we have, right? That's all. 
uh, we place this filtered one in here. So let's head over and switch data over to filtered. And here we can check if filtered is available and data as well. And let's hit save. And there we go, refreshes and check this out. When I click here, poof, we get yellow, green, all, okay? And the way this works is essentially, again, I'll pull up Drizzle Studio here so I can show you. In the course, we're gonna learn how to create these tags on the products. And when we check the tags, we're gonna be able to add, as you can see, Dream Chaser, Chaser, different kinds of tags. And we're just using the array sum here to find those. Okay, so it's just really, you could compare anything here if you want an ID, a color, whatever you want. So whew, that's gonna be it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Please drop a subscribe if you enjoyed this episode. I'm so excited. I've been working on this course for the past like six months and I'm, I'm just, I just think it's going to be so cool. So look out. It's going to be in the next two or three videos. See you in the next one.